on to phpvideotutorials.com. We're moving along nicely. Uh, just sitting in my Kitchiana. Uh, it's very hot outside today. Uh, just trying to stay out of the sun because the sun will burn you <laughs> very badly. It's uh, It's been a pretty hot week here in Australia down under. So, uh, yeah. But anyways, we got stuff to do here. So I'm going to uh, introduce you to helpers uh, in the next bit. So I'll see you guys there. All right, so let's take a look at uh, helpers, shall we? Open up the Windows Photo Gallery and we'll take a look. So you can see here that I see helpers as equipment. All right, so it's like your lighting, your makeup, and your tanning gun. But that's just an airbrush gun. I couldn't find a tanning gun, and I'd never seen a tanning gun before. So I'm going with the airbrush there, but you get the drift. So it kind of helps out, helps out your views. You know what I mean? It's called helper. Helps your views. All right, so hi. I'm a helper. Equipment. My job is to help out the views. I'm also part of the view. The controller chooses what helpers he needs for his view. Although the standard helpers are always available. HTML and form. So those two helpers are always available in your views. Let's take a look at this now. So let's just minimize. Open up your project ski. And we'll go into the controllers here. And we'll go into the post controller. And we'll just take a look here. So you can see that our post controller has chosen two helpers, HTML and form, and they're the default helpers anyway. So he doesn't really need to choose them. They're included uh, by default anyway. But nonetheless, he's, 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 uh, he's chosen those. All right, so now our controller can use this equipment inside his view. So if we go into views, uh, posts, and we go into the add CTP or the, the cake um, view template there you can see that he's using the form helper to create a form for post okay so that's the start of the form and you can see that he's ending the form there he's also using it to create input boxes for the form all right and you can also see that he's using the html helper all right see how they correspond so html that's that variable there and he's running a method up there to create a link and all sorts of stuff so that's what a helper is it helps out your views it's also uh, the smart part of your views. Okay, so the view is pretty dumb. We don't want to put too much logic in here. We want to hide all that logic inside our helpers. All right, and we can create our own helpers, and they can live in this directory here called helpers. Okay, under the views directory, uh, and they're very powerful. So we'll be creating a few of those uh, throughout this course. Uh, we'll also be uh, putting them in another place, and I'll, I'll um, talk about that when we get into the the practical side of this course. All right, so now let's go back and take a look at the. Uh, Windows Photo Gallery and we'll just finish off the blue box here. So you can see here, the great thing about being a helper equipment is I'm reusable between view templates, layouts and elements. That's just how a photographer works as well. He gets all his equipment that he knew, needs for his view for when he's going to take his photo and um, yeah, he brings that equipment along to all locations. So you can kind of think of it like that. Uh, you can see here, without me, views would look pretty bad. Can you imagine a model without lighting, makeup and this fake tan, they're not going to look as good, are they? So that's what they do. And we all know that. <laughs> so I'll, um, I'll see you at the next bit when we talk about elements. Uh, that should be pretty cool. All right, so I see elements as a sheep. <laughs> Remember Dolly the sheep? She was a clone, the first ever thing, living creature they cloned. Uh, her name was Dolly, so I'm going to use Dolly. It's not actually Dolly. This is a cuter sheep. This is a little lamb. It's a baby sheep. All right, so let's introduce you to the element. Hi, I'm an element. I'm a part of the view you need to use more than once. I'm made up of either an element of a view template or a layout, so I'm not very smart. Anything you put inside views can be inside me, and that includes helpers. All right, I live in the app views elements directory with all the other elements. It's kind of lonely, so I like being used inside layouts and view templates. All right, and you can use it like that. So it's just an include file, all right? So we can make a copy or a clone of our layout header and our, and our layout footer and part of our template. Things that we're going to need over and over again in our application, we can put them into this directory and we can just include them like that. All right, so very, very simple. So let's just go uh, in here and do that right now. So just say we wanted to reuse on our add.ctp view template file uh, the form part inside here. We could easily do that. So you can see on the edit, if we go to the edit, it's using that as well there. So maybe we want to not do that twice. So we can easily create 
an element. So let's just copy this out. Copy like that. Copy. So we're making a clone of it. We'll go into um, our elements. All right. We'll create a new file on there. So just throw in a new file. And we'll just call this one um, form post. Or we'll call it form post.ctp. Hit save and we'll hit OK. Paste that in. We'll resave it again. Save. We'll go back into our add. We'll remove it from there. We'll then include it. So we'll do a include a element. So we're doing the this element method. And we'll just throw in the location of where it is. So form posts like that. And now if we come back into our project here and we click on new post, you can see that it's still there. We're still using that, but now we're using it from inside here. So now let's just make a copy of that method we just did, including it. Copy. We'll go into our edit. We'll remove all that stuff up until ID because we're going to need the ID because we're making an edit. So we're going to have to need that in our form. So we'll move that like that. And then we'll just throw this down there. Paste that in. So now, even if we're editing something, just throw in a test. Test. And we'll just submit it. We go back to our posts. We click on edit. You can see that it's all there. So now we're reusing that element. So it comes in very handy for other things too, headers and footers and, and parts of your uh, application. So we might want to create an element for this part, this row here, because we're going to use that multiple times throughout our view. So we might as well um, create that. But we'll do all that as we're uh, moving along in the practical side. But that should basically explain what an element is. Very simple. It's just a part of your application you want to reuse over and over again, or part of your view you want to reuse over and over again. Alright, let's look at validation. So just open up your validation study guide. You can see here that I see validations as a model's diet. Models eat like to eat healthy food and they don't like to eat any of this junk here. Although I would like to eat that hamburger right now. <laughs> uh, you can see here, okay, about. Hi, I'm a validation diet. Most models have different validations, so be sure to open up your model and check out his eating habits. You can do this by looking at the validation property inside your model. Before trying to think of your own diet rules, be sure to look over the Cake PHP cookbook for pre-made rules. All right, so you can look in there and you can see that Cake has basically got you covered for pretty much anything you want to validate against. But if you need to create a custom validation, you can. All right, so let's um let's check out our, our model's eating habits right now. We'll just go in and have a look see. So let's open up your editor there and jump into models directory and we just want to open up our post model and have a look see. So just taking a quick look over the model we can see that there is no validate property uh, in the model so we need to create one. Our model will even eat air if we want. So if we can go in here and click new post and we can just submit that in and go back to our post and you can see that he ate basically nothing there. So there's no title or body or anything. So we want, don't want that to happen right now. We're just going to validate against the title uh, to begin with, just to explain how this all works. So let's jump back in to your editor and post model, and we'll just create that uh, variable there. So I just want to validate. So you create the validate property, and then we just want to say the column we want to validate against, which will be title. Okay, and we want to throw in an array. And just inside this array, we want to throw in some rules. So um, I'm going to throw in uh, the rule to validate for the min length. All right. And we're going to say min length of one. And then I'm going to say the message we want to say. So we'll say title is required. All right. We hit save there and we come back into our application now and we try and post in a new post and we don't put in a title you'll see that we get a error message and we get the message back from our model all right so you can see I just set up a rule okay that's a pre-built in rule you can create your own rules but as I said cake PHP has got heaps and heaps of them and basically you can do everything with them so that's the min length of one okay so it's got to be greater than one character if it's not it's gonna say title is required
I will just add in that you can apply multiple rules to a column, okay? So you can validate title against other things if you wanted to. Uh, yeah, so just think of this as the diet of your model, what your diet, what your model eats. He's very fussy, and um, I guess the fussier your model is, um, probably the better the data you're going to have put into your database table. So uh, adding in good validation rules is, um, is key to getting the, the right data uh, for your application. All right, so now I want to introduce you to some crud. <laughs> what cows eat? No. Um, this is actually a computer term. All right, so just open up your study guide and the crud guide. The crud guide to the galaxy. All right, so let's just take a look at cruddy crud. You can see here that it says, if I zoom in Zs a little bit, or I even click that little button there. See that technology? I know this tool that I'm using, this Camtasia Studio, can do all this zooming and all this stuff, but I much prefer to do it on camera with my tools. You know what I'm talking about? Do it old school. All right, so let's introduce you to CRUD. Hi, I'm CRUD. I'm a quick way of saying create, read, update, and delete. I mostly use when talking about model data, rows in a table in CakePHP. But I'm not just about rows in a table. Anytime you need to express create, read, update, and delete, use me to describe it. Example, sessions and cookies both use CRUD. All right, so any persistent storage that you can think of, whether it's even a flat file, if you're able to create, read, update, and delete it, just say the word CRUD and everyone will understand you. You'll sound really cool to all the other programmers. They'll be like, oh, sure, CRUD. Everyone else around there will be like, oh my god, those guys are talking about CRUD. Alright, so I'll just go over a little bit of this as well. You can see that I've got a plate of salad because our model likes to eat salad, so we just ate that salad. And for reading, I've got his food journal. That's everything he's eaten. So we can uh, loop over that, and that will be the, the rows coming out, or the posts coming out and update is he's just had a drink with his meal so he's updated his meal and for delete I've got a girl vomiting into a toilet because that makes sense he's had a meal and it's not too well she's had a meal and it's not too tasty and she's vomiting it out Blech! so we can delete it so that's create read update and delete stands for crud now let's uh, use another tool to to play with crud and we're gonna play with our model using uh, another tool I'm gonna introduce you to all right, time to look at another toolsy. So let's open up the study guide and check out the interactive tool. It's a tool, so it's part of the Cake console. Uh, I call it a Wiimote, so it's like the Nintendo Wii's controller. It's very interactive. That's what I think of when I think of interactive in my head. I see that controller. Uh, hi, I'm the interactive tool, Wiimote. I'm a tool for interacting with parts of your application. The parts I can interact with at the moment are models and routes. I'm limited, but still useful. No doubt in the future I'll have more functionality and be able to do some really cool things. I think I would make a great learning tool to get the feel of the Cake PHP syntax. And I think it would. I think um, being able to type uh, syntax into a command line and um, get um, feedback back from it straight away is a very good uh, tool for, uh, for learning syntax, I believe. All right, so some of the conventions down here, we want to do some of the commands, so we want to start that up. So to do that, we've got to run the cake console, and it's the default tool. So let's open up the command line here, and let's cd into our project. So c wamp www cake cms, and let's run that. So cake console, enter. And you can see that when we start it up, we get uh, a list of all our models. All right, so we can interact with these models. If we go back to our study guide, you can see that if we wanted to do a find on our models, we can say the model name and the find method off our model. So we can do that. So we just want to find all the rows in the post posts table. So we can say find. And of course, in here, we have to say all. We're going to find all, and we hit enter. So we've only got one in there at the moment. If you don't have any records in there at, at right now, uh, you will have in a minute. We'll add in another one now. So we'll do a um, post, and we'll do a save here. And we're just going to throw in a title. And we'll just say the title equals Cake PHP Rocks. And we'll just hit enter. And you'll see that record saved. So if we go back to our application and we go back to our posts, you can see that the cake rocks. And the ID number for that is number three. So we can do an update on that if we wanted to. Just push up to get that back. Cake rocks. I'll say my world. Sounds a bit dirty, but 
It's pretty cool, isn't it? The cake. And if we throw in the ID of that. So the ID was 3. We hit enter. Save the record. We come back here. We do a refresh. And you can see that that's been updated. Alright, so now we just need to do a delete, but unfortunately right now this tool doesn't handle deletes just yet. So we'll just do a delete the old school way and uh, use the interface here and we'll just click on delete and we'll hit OK. But I do think that's a cool way to get up and running pretty quickly, you know, with just with the syntax there. And if we come back into our um, application here and we were to look at our post controller, you can see that um, yeah, it just runs a post and it runs that delete. And we were just running before when we did the add-in, we were just running the save and we were putting in the title. But you can see inside the post controller it uses the this data which comes from a form to do all that. So you've already had kind of a little interaction with the models now on a, on a bit more of an intimate level which is uh, cool. That's what I like that tool. Uh, so yeah, that's been a, a pretty good lesson. We'll do a bit of a roundup and um, yeah, we'll finish off this lesson. Alright, so next lesson we're going to be looking at routes, alright, so that's going to be a lot of fun. We're also going to look at components, alright, which is going to be pretty coolsy. And we're going to look at um, a few other little things like inheritance and just a little bit of a, uh, probably a 5 or 10 minute demo on um, object oriented programming. Just to get your, your brains up to speed and um, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, quickly move along and then... Um, yeah, we'll be uh, cooking with gas, I'd say, so it's going to be a, a pretty big lesson. Don't forget, though, to read the study guides and read all these links as well, but read over these study guides and read the links, and all should be good. If you uh, don't read these and you don't study them, you're going to fall behind, and uh, cake's a big thing, as you probably noticed. Uh, but um, if you don't do these things, you won't be able to follow with the practical part of the, the course which is going to happen in a couple of lessons we're just going to go crazy and code like machines and build this application super quick so you're going to have to know all the terminology so study up and I'll see you the next lesson and thanks again for joining me can't wait till the next lesson totally pumped the cred guide to the galaxy welcome to the far far regions of the outer limits of the space time continuum